to lose. I'm built to win. Applied myself. I filled it in. No time for the doubt. They counted me out. I'm getting it in. No time for no loss. I'm hey, we're going to make the playoffs. It didn't end so well for you, brother. If you ain't thinking the same, then we playing by different rules. You can't see the vision we live in at different views. Look till we complete the mission, keep getting up, never snooze. I walked a mile in my shoes, had the mind of a fool. Take you fell asleep <laughs> at the trade <laughs> deadline <laughs> when we had a trade to get Kyle Lowry out of here. Found the time to get to it, they told me I couldn't do it, they told me I couldn't make it. They sold it, could never break it. That's sad, sadly mistaken. I need a piece of the pie, I want it so bad I can taste it. They told me, like, told me, keep on. Yo! Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. You already know. Oh, my God. I didn't even talk about that, man. You already know, man. It's game day. I'm talking about this time, man. It's about that time. And it's also game day, man. I'm pumped. Hey, listen, y'all. Welcome to Refuse to Lose Sports, man. My name is Joe Jordan. Hey, Sam. 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 We got some stuff to talk about, so important things. Number one important thing, though, like Tom said, we got to talk about the WNBA drive, a revolutionary one, right? This, this one is going to set the tone for the rest of the, you know, you know, years going forward for that for that league. So we got to recap that, right, or give our reaction to it most likely. And um, we got some NBA basketball today, y'all, play-in basketball. You know, nobody wants to be in the play-in, but, hey, it is what it is. You got – the Lakers versus the Pelicans, we're going to make our picks on that. And the Warriors versus the Kings, we're going to make our picks on that. I'm pretty sure you already know who I'm picking. But I got two of my roles with me. I got Mr. Your Done Son here, Tom Mo, And I got Mr. BWT. He said, you know what, y'all know it's baseball season, but I'm going to take my time out 9 o'clock in the morning if we're going to talk some basketball. We got Teddy. How y'all doing, fellas? Man, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, it's, it's good to see that the ladies came out there and sh shook up uh, things again, not just in NCAA. They shook up the WNBA this time. Got commercials and everything going, man. It was a big night for the WNBA and the NBA as well, because now that means, hey, fellas, you got to step it up. Mm -hmm. I'm doing good. PWT. I'm doing great, man. Uh, Yankees lost last night, but... <sighs> <laughs> Hey, 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 know, hey. No, 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 no. That was for you the comments. You win one time we lose. You win one time we lose. All right. I'll let you have that one. I'll let no, that was for that comment yesterday when you was like, they lost today. I, I did. I did. I did. I, I said everyone in the chat was going to get an L, and you guys were the only one to get a dub. Wow. That was pretty easy. I, oh, I got to post my uh, tiger skin. My bad. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, sir. But yes, judge? sir. You the one, man. What's going on? Oh, oops. Listen, man. I, I would do it again, but I saw Teddy holding his ears. I wait. I wait. You know what I mean? I'll let Teddy wake up a little <laughs> bit. You know, cause I, you know, don't forget it, man. It's playing time, baby. It's playing time, man. But look, I'm excited though. I'm excited. But look though, um, listen, y'all. It's gonna be a busy day. It's gonna be a good day, man. I'm excited, man. <laughs> All right, but we are streaming this on three platforms. We are streaming this on YouTube, Facebook, and X. So make sure y'all go on all three platforms. I know y'all have it. So go on all three platforms, like the video on all three, retweet on, you know. Also, follow and subscribe on all three platforms if you haven't done it yet. Pretty sure you already did on YouTube. But if you haven't done it, hit that subscribe button. You just watch it. Hit the subscribe button, y'all. And make sure you share with others that you know personally so they can come on watch with you live. Not, not later. We're talking about live because you can use the comment section. We can see all the comments y'all putting out throughout the show. Comments already up. Shout out to Cardo for being the first comment. We here. We, we, hey, we can always depend on that comment. We here, right? But look, though, I know it's Tuesday. Probably, I don't know, you know, I don't know how Tuesdays are for you, but Tuesdays for me, obviously, you can tell I'm excited. 
Hopefully you are too. And if you are excited, hey, you can go down on the right car, right part on the right side of the comment section and you're going to see a dollar sign. All right. You click on that dollar sign. You see different dollars amounts, you know, you know, uh, different colors and stuff like that. You pick a dollar amount. You push a super chat in. You hit send. Boom. No matter what goes on, no matter what is going on during the show, we're going to stop everything we're doing and hit you with the hold up. And we're going to put the comment on the screen. We're going to read it out loud and give you the floor because we appreciate all the donations and the donations, gifts. donations, gifts, gifts. And last but not least, enjoy the rest of the show. Tomo, floor is yours. So, you know, yesterday towards the end of the show, we were more so talking about the WNBA draft. We were trying to figure out when it started. And, you know, we both was like, oh, it's tonight. Uh -huh. So, you know, all signs point to New York. We all had to go up to New York and be like, man, the ladies are now, who's going to go number one? Who's going to go number two? Who's going to go number three? The world was like, I don't even know why you're asking who's going to go number one, because if you don't say Caitlin Clark at number one, then you tripping. But the lady showed up and they said, hey, y'all need to turn me up, okay? up, up, up. Yeah, Dave, you're not going to put us in the doghouse. We, we remember. Uh, like <laughs> we that. remember. <laughs> yeah, so we talking same game, new arena. WNBA draft happened yesterday. It took place Monday night in Brooklyn Academy of Music. Oof. It felt like it was music because it was nothing but music to some people is. And, you know, some of the bands start playing sad music. But at the end of the day, some lives changed. So we got to react. In front of a thousand fans, they say this sold out. As soon as everyone knew when the draft was happening in a place, time, they said the tickets sold out instantly. And... Joe, NCAA, Teddy, WNBA, ladies are here. We should have did a bracket too, but I think that would have been a little easy for some people. Shout out to you, Carl. Feel better. Indiana Fever take Caitlin Clark at number one. And then we got number two. We got Cameron Brink. We can go down the list. Camilla Cardoza went three. And of course, everybody was waiting to see when Angel Reese was going to go. So we got to do a quick reaction. I'm going to get you guys' reaction, because if you was in the WNBA chat, you already know. See, Tay was there with me, so you already know the reaction we had. I'm going to start with you, Teddy. Um, my, when I saw the top 10, um, my instant reaction was, how did six people pass up on Angel Reese? And then the fact that she met, she's on the same team as Camilla, like, that is going to be insane. Mm-hmm. Like, they're going to out-rebound probably almost every team. Like, no doubt about it. And um, remember how you how you said earlier, if you took if you didn't take Caitlin Clark, you were crazy? I saw somebody put a bet in for for them not to take it. Uh. <laughs> donation, dude. Like, I mean, <laughs> it, it's common sense. Caitlin Clark, generational type player. She set all types of records in uh, um, NCAA and mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I'm excited to see what she can do at the next level because uh, her game is nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Listen, man, first I want to say congratulations to all the draftees last night. Everybody got drafted. And um, this feels like an important moment in the WNBA. Like, we talking about a moment that we're going to point to, like, man, the WNBA in 2024 was the reason why it's where it's at right now. All right? Kind of like Bird and Magic. Right? Bird and Magic, you know, the NBA ratings were down. You know, the the, the games were, were tape delayed. You know what I mean? Like, was, like NBA wasn't it. You know, baseball was, was kind of king around that time. Right, Teddy, I would say? Baseball was king? Right? It was. Yes, it is okay. <laughs> All right, I ain't gonna lie. NFL got something to say about that in America, but look, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> but, I got shot at yesterday, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, but when Bird and bro, when we talk about y'all, what college basketball did this year is sold the matchup, they sold the matchup of the players, not the teams of the players, right. So, and that's what they did in WB, I'm sorry, in, in the NBA, Magic and Bird. They had a robbery in college and they brought it over literally to the um, the NBA with two historic franchises. Now, I thought it was ironic that how, you know, South Carolina beat, sorry, South Carolina loses to Caitlin Clark two years ago, right? 
And then now Aaliyah Boston, who was on that team, is playing with Caitlin Clark. And then the two teams that Caitlin Clark lost to in the national championship game, LSU, South Carolina, those two are teamed up together. So that's a storyline right there. You got you got uh, 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 Camilla and uh, Angel on the same team that knocked out Caitlin Clark. That like, they both stopped her for getting a natty. You know, so this draft class, I feel like, is going to is going to revolutionize the WNBA. Like Indiana Fever, right? Out of the 40 games they had, first of all, they had a second worst ticket sales last year in WBA. Out of 40 games they had this year, 36 are, are nationally televised. <laughs> 36 out of 40. WNBA is already expanding. They already announced they're going to um, expand. They're going to um, expand in uh, the two more states. They are, they're going to open up two more teams. So, and that's kind of like what happened with Magic and Bird when they came in. They started expanding more teams. So, I can see more teams coming, and I think that's better because it's not that many jobs in the WNBA. The more teams you have, the more opportunities for these women to actually get in the WNBA. The more marketing for the WNBA, it means more money for the WNBA players. So, this is a revolutionary moment. And I'm just excited that we are we have this platform. We're covering it. Maybe we'll get a little snippet 20 years from now, and they'll be like, you know, somebody, you know, somebody on this episode saying something might have in the compilation. I don't know. <laughs> might see something. I know one that's gonna be in the compilation. I already know <laughs> one. Angel gonna come back and be like, but you said I ain't had no post moves. How you want me to go to the mystics, bro? Like you was talking bad about me, but you mad at y'all ain't draft me. Yeah, man. At the end of the day, the Wizards, I mean, I said the Wizards. The Wizards need rebounding, too. But the <laughs> Mystics, man, they was they finished 10th in rebounding. So I thought the fact that they needed somebody who can be a crash the boards, they was going to go get Reese. Like, mm. you seen what she did in her last game on a bad ankle. She gave you a double-double. But I ain't mad at the pick that we got. You know, we got Aaliyah Elvis, so we got a more well-grown player. It was more so looking for someone to team up with Shakira Austin, so they went to 4-5. Which is cool, but you know, I mean, <laughs> we talking about marketing in the WNBA, and the, they had the commissioner come out and say, "Look, we spent our most money on marketing this year because we knew what this draft was going to be." Like the WNBA said, "We're not going to play around." It, like you said, this is one of the best draft classes. This could change the game. You yeah. already got a lot of eyes on us because of what the Aces are doing. You know, when they built the Super Team and the Liberty, but not just the Super Team in general. Asia Wilson and all her. Uh, post-game championship conferences like she was going crazy up there so people was like man they these ladies are more down to earth than some of these nba players and they just look like they having fun with the technical fundamental sound game that they got another thing i want to point out is man i don't know who's like the stylist for some of these ladies but uh they had that stuff on last night man you seen the product you see caitlin clark with the product she walked up like i told y'all i'm the number one pick i showed you i'm walking up like money Angel Reese, all of them. So shout out to everybody that made it. But I do want to address this. And Teddy, you said it before I could. The Chicago Sky. Shout out to their GM in their front office, man. Because they mm -hmm. said, look, if y'all going to let us get two of the best players in this draft, why not? So once the Mystics went and took Aaliyah and welcomed to D.C., they said, we're going to run it back and go get Andrew Reese. And you put them two, like you said, who was battle-tested and going against each other. Mm -hmm. You put them on the same team. Yeah, I know Tay said, I need to chill out. But this reminds me when Candace Parker went down there with Asia Wilson. It's like, look, you got two people that's going to be dedicated and they're going to protect the paint and they got energy. So mm -hmm. they're going to feed off each other. Mm -hmm. Tickets. The tickets sold out. They say Kaitlyn Clark jersey sold out. Mm -hmm. To go see Caitlin Clark at the Misses game, they charging you like two hundred to sit in the section now. Just saying, man, things is going up, yeah. up, up. And I, somebody I, tweeted too. My bad, Joe. Somebody tweeted like, boy, boy. "He's like, so fellas, we watching the WNBA this season." Yeah, <laughs> I like, bro, I've been there, but welcome, welcome to the party. Mm -hmm. And then look for all the newcomers, right? People who are about to be more dedicated. Now, you know how it is. When you're there first, you kind of get a little grumpy. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all late to the party. Appreciate the new fans. <laughs> like, the new fans going to bring new marketing. It's going to bring new money. Now, I do want to say this. What you said about Chicago Sky, right? Uh, not Chicago Sky, sorry. What you said about the WNBA as a whole, they spend the most money they ever spent marketing-wise because they knew it was coming. One of my mentors told me this, y'all. Before you seize the moment, you have to seize. No, before you seize the moment, you have to seize the moment. 
you got to see it coming before you can really take advantage of it. And the one thing about WBA, they was like, yo, it's an avalanche coming. We got to prepare. Winter is coming. <laughs> we have to prepare. <laughs> we have to prepare. So great. Hey, kudos to WBA, man, for recognizing the moment and seizing the moment. Yeah, this season gonna be like that, man. We gonna see it's gonna be a lot of more. It's gonna be a lot more topics. We already knew it was coming. That we that's why we created a whole nother chat just for the situation. We was prepared. Facts, <laughs> right on time, man. So again, shout out to everybody that got drafted. I like to see what goes down this season, but uh, <laughs> these the moment, Joe. Talk about these shows. Let's go. All right, man. We have a plethora of shows, as my man Dave would say. All right. R2L is not just a show. It's a network, y'all. We have a network of shows. So let's get it. So the first show we're going to bring up is King's Talk. All right? King's Talk with Joe Jordan and myself. Uh, Sacramento Kings Basketball Talk. I did an episode post um, 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 NBA regular season talking about a little bit about the matchups. But obviously, obviously, we're going live tonight after the Warriors and Kings game. Win, lose, or draw. We're going we're gonna to go live. And you'll get a live reaction of me. Hopefully, I'm doing this. Why are you going to be yelling at me, though, if I do that, though? Don't be like 1 30 in the morning. But you get what I'm saying, all right? But so make sure you tune in to King's Talk with Joe Jordan. All these, ch- all these channels I'm about to go over have their own YouTube channel. You can go in the link in the description, and every link of each channel is in there, all right? Secondly, uh, sticking to NBA, we got Mr. RBO himself. RBO, Real Ballers Only with Vaughn. This is NBA only talk, all right? So I'm pretty sure I don't have an exact time and date for you guys right now, but I'm pretty sure an episode will be coming out soon because the play-in is today. The play-in is today and the, and the, and the playoffs start this Saturday. So our, listen out for RBO. You're going to be busy for the next two months because it's NBA basketball playoffs, all right? Then we got Dave's Doghouse. All right, Dave's Doghouse. This is a great show, y'all. Uh, one of our co-hosts, Dave, he basically talks about the lowlights and the highlights of anybody in the sports world. You can be a sports player, coach, front office person. You can be someone in relations with the player or somebody in the sports world, right? Uh, you could be an interpreter. You could be in the sports media. You could be anybody. You could be a cat running on a, on a, on a baseball field. I don't know, right? You could be anybody. If you do your job, if you don't do your job, you will be put in a doghouse. If you don't do your job, you will be put in a doghouse. But if you do your job in an exceptional way, more than better than others, then guess what? You will be in the yard with the dogs. So Dave has an episode coming out this Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So make sure y'all stay tuned for that. Uh, uh, next, we got FFC, Fantasy Football with Coach Coons. Obviously, Fantasy Football drives are not until August, sometimes September. But listen, y'all. He's he's diving into the NFL draft. He's diving into the free agency. He's diving into anything that's, that's in the trade market. So he's talking NFL right now. He did an episode yesterday. Make sure y'all tune in. Like I said, he did an updated version of the free agency, and he talked about the NFL draft, all right, which is nine days away. Woo! Nine days away, fellas. <laughs> We've got an NFL draft episode coming up. So make sure y'all tune in to FFC, Fantasy Football with Coach Coons. We got CTC, Carl talking college. Yes, college uh, basketball and college football is in the offseason. But, hey, a lot of coaching changes are, has happened. And Carl will be putting out an episode talking about the coaching carousel, right? And you got the NFL drag coming up. I'm pretty sure Carl going to dip a dab into that, right? And, yeah, so make sure you tune into CTC, Carl talking college. All your college sports goes through CTC, all right? BWT sitting right here with me. All right, uh, baseball with Teddy. This is a baseball show, base with great baseball content. As you can tell by the hat, he's a Yankees fan. Don't get turned off if you're a Boston fan when you see this logo. He talks about everybody, all right. But but yeah, so he's a diehard Yankees fan, but he's a diehard baseball fan. Watches baseball every single day. He watches every Yankees game for sure. All right, so he did part of the episode yesterday also. All right, he just put an episode yesterday. All right, so make sure you tune in to that episode. And all your baseball content goes through BWT. And like I said, he's right here. So y'all, y'all got him in the flesh right here. All right. And last but not least, we got In the Red Corner. This is a boxing only show. Uh, they just did an episode um, on Monday. Well, two Mondays ago. They will be, they should be coming out with an episode probably this weekend. I'm not sure, but we're gonna we're gonna keep y'all informed what's going on. But mostly every two weeks, they do an episode on Sundays, all right. Normally at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So with Fast Camp Tony, Ricky, and Ty. 
So make sure y'all stay tuned for In the Red Corner. Those are your shows. Tomo, floor is back, back to you. Hold on. You, you forgot one more because Tay, Tay said, and don't forget trolling with Tay every Friday at 2 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Catch your sports bloopers and your troll of the week with me. <laughs> I guess he, I guess he trying to say, hey, Joe, I guess he's shooting a shot, man. He let me know every, at 2 p.m. Friday, trolling with Tay. <laughs> trolling with Tay. Hey, y'all got to find him on Instagram. You got to join the chats. You find him on Instagram. Get more that details. That might be a funny show, though. <laughs> get more details. Like, hey, he done said it on air now. It was recorded. Exactly. Speaking of trolling, though, man, <sighs> you already know what time it is. It's playing time. Oof. And we talk about some. I mean, shout out to Blaze, man. NBA chat. He brought the he brought the he brought the conversation back two years ago. LeBron sat up and said, "I don't know what this playing thing is, man. Like, why are we even doing this?" And proceeded to be in the play-in every year after he made that comment. So we we talked about the captain, but he ain't the captain now. It was like you mad at it, but the NBA is, seems like it's harder than ever because you still in the play-in. Without the play-in, you wouldn't be in the playoffs. And you probably wouldn't be playing because you probably were. Or retire, or you probably would have found another team. But this is see what I'm saying. Trolling with Tay, make sure y'all check it out. <laughs> we got to make our picks. Playing's here. Pelicans, Joe. You know, you know a lot about the Pelicans. You know a lot about the Lakers. <laughs> Both of these teams. You gotta so see who's gonna win. <laughs> we gotta see who's gonna win. Play. I mean, I'll say players versus Lakers. I mean, that's kind of what it is at times. But Pelicans versus Lakers. Who you got? All right, so now I'm gonna put a car moment to be technical. Technically, Lakers would have made the playoffs all three years because they were the seven seed or eight seed. All three years. <laughs> Technically, all right. For the viewers, I don't want to invite no comment, like you know, I had to make sure you know. But all uh, is say he got a wizard logo in the background. What does he know about basketball? <laughs> That's all they're gonna say. I, I can't stand for you to say about me. You a Kings fan? What do you know? I know more than you. How about that? <laughs> But uh, here's the thing, though. Um, the Lakers obvious, obviously are a bad matchup for the Pelicans, as we know, right? They're 3-1 and one against the Pelicans. Well, I think all three games they won, they blew them out. We saw what happened in the last game of the season. Now, granted, Brandon Ingram just came back from an injury. He missed a lot of time. He was on a, a minute restriction. And y'all know how that can be. You bring a star back into the lineup. It kind of throws off the rhythm of the team. We all know how that goes, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know... I'm going to go with the Lakers, right? I'm going to pick the Lakers in a close game, though. I don't think it's going to be no blowout like it's been in the past, like it was the other day. Um, Brandon Ingram shouldn't be on no minute restriction in this game. Um, I feel like the reason why the Pelicans are a uh, – Lakers are a bad matchup to the Pelicans because the Pelicans' specialty to me is their length on the perimeter. Like I always tell you all, that's why we had troubles with them. They do good against smaller teams. Like you got guys like Herb Jones, you know, who – Full court pressure, swiping at the ball. They force a lot of turnovers, right? And they get a lot of points when they fast break. So, right, you know, so I'm, I'm a first hand witness of that, or <laughs> five games of that, right? So, but the Lakers, they have size. And normally when the Lakers play the Pelicans, LeBron, LeBron is, is the primary ball handler. I mean, we just saw the last game, he has 17 assists. So he's the primary ball handler. So all that, all that, you know, trying to be all physical, all that stuff don't work with LeBron James. I'm sorry, he just don't. And then on top of that, the Lakers like to get to the free throw line, so they they, they, they don't shoot a lot of threes. Like they they, they um they they uh, have a lot of pain points. And the the uh what's called sorry the Pelicans don't have a lot of rim protection. You have Valanciunas, but he's don't have he, he's not a rim protector. Zion's an undersized big. And then another thing defensively, Le, LeBron. I give LeBron some credit. LeBron can kind of match Zion. Zion has size. But he's quick. That's what Zion's specialty is. Like everybody thinks because he just he just heavy. No, the man is so quick. So when you put a big on this dude, he just run right past him every single time. But LeBron is also quick. You know, so LeBron that, that does a good job on Zion. So my thing is for the Pelicans to win this game, they're gonna have to shoot like 45 to 50, like 45 percent from three. They got they, they gotta have a great three-point shooting night, and they gotta be good on the offensive glass. I don't think Willie Green should take out Valanciunas. I know he did it last game, try to play a small ball. No, you want to match size with Lakers. You want to you want to be big. You don't want the Lakers to out rebound you. Normally, when they out rebound you, they're gonna win the game. So they gotta win. A, they gotta hit the offensive glass, and they gotta shoot great from the three point line. Those are gonna be the two indicators, the two things I'm gonna be watching of this game. And those three players that gotta shoot great: CJ McCollum, 
Brandon Ingram and, her, and uh, her, her, her Jones. Watch number three, guys. They're gonna have to. I know in my opening uh, monologue about the about this segment, I said a lot about LeBron and just being in the playoffs and how old he is. But the fact that LeBron can turn it on and off is the fact that he's still playing at the age of thirty nine. I know uh, if Shannon Sharp was on here, he'd be like, "Your goat could never." <laughs> but mm. at the end of the day, different <laughs> different eras, different players. We're not gonna start that today. Let's not go We're there. Not- I see it. We're not going to start it today, but Lakers own this series three to one just in the regular season. So that right there lets you know they kind of got a mental advantage. And if you watch LeBron's podcast, where we got the LeCap segment from, this guy knows a lot about the team that he's going up against. So once he gets in the playoffs, the zero dark 30 starts again. And then it's just like, all right, it's time to hone in. So he knows that if I have to score a lot this game, I want to do that for us to win. If yeah. I need to, if I need to, Turn into Magic Johnson again and just get 17 assists. I can do that. Whatever it takes for us to win this game, I'm going to do it. AD, make sure you ice up, son, because they're going to need you to. Because if those threes get to falling, like Joe said, it's going to be it's going to get ugly, and we're going to need all hands on deck. So for me, it's really going to come down to like coaching and what LeBron shows up. But I say all that to say this: I'm picking the Lakers to win this game. I cracked all my jokes, but I'm picking the Lakers to win this game. Teddy, who you got? Yeah. Um, I'm, Before you go, Teddy, my bad. My bad. AD got them back spasms. <coughs> I said he got to ice up. I mean, Denver. <laughs> you know, they're like, hey. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, maybe Denver ain't any in, in option for them. Because they win this game, they got to play Denver. Go ahead. Go ahead, Teddy. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, some people have been saying the Lakers should lose this game so that their road uh, is a little easier. In the uh, in the playoffs, um, but I don't think LeBron has that in him uh, to just go out there and lose a playoff game just to avoid somebody. I feel like um, I feel like they heard what Malone said last year and all that trash talk that Denver was talking at the parade, and um, I feel like they they're gonna come out and dominate this game. I think it's gonna be a, a double digit win for the Lakers. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, I mean, just just wake me up from the snap when when all this playing stuff is over because the real basketball, <laughs> right? Because uh, I'm still <laughs> right. Uh, we've been Celtics. We've been waiting for the real season to start. We've been having Peyton Pritchard act like he's like Jason Tatum and stuff like that. We have people in the chat saying that. Pay oh, to be on the Olympic team, like it's 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 insane. It's so like, I mean, but um, but yeah, um, I'm gonna go with the Lakers tonight in this game. And, and real quick to to respond to Jamal's comment, uh, don't forget about Trey Murphy, Joe. See, Trey Murphy is a given. You know, I expect Trey Murphy to shoot well. I'm talking about the guys I'm looking to shoot well is CJ, because CJ didn't shoot well the last game of the season. Brandon Ingram is back. He's coming off an injury. We're gonna see. You know, I don't know how he is. And, and Herb Jones didn't shoot. He, well, he did shoot, shoot well. Trey Murphy, right? His last few games. Listen to this, y'all. Three, from three point percentage: fifty percent, sixty six percent, fifty percent, forty one percent, thirty percent. Then he had sixteen, thirty three, forty. The man is shooting great from the three point line. Like it's a given. He gonna shoot great for fifty percent. He gonna shoot good from the three point line. <laughs> and he gonna get his threes up. But Jamo is right though. Trey Murphy is gonna be a part of that. That three point avalanche. Hey, Only way they're gonna win though. That I'm with you on that one, Joe, because I don't think the Lakers. I mean, the Lakers can score with them, but as far as when it comes to like three point shooting, they don't have a consistent team that can shoot threes at, at the rate the Pelicans can. When they on, I ain't saying the mm-hmm. Pelicans are the Warriors. I'm just saying, you know, I'm not gonna talk too much about the Warriors yet. You know, that's I see. I see you tensing up a little bit, Joe. Tensing up. <laughs> 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 we're gonna see man we're gonna see so it's a, it's a clear consensus that the panel says we got the lakers one in this one yeah yeah right. so now just yeah. get ready man hey hey bib just letting you know right now if the lakers winning they gotta see the nuggets you already know carl about to come out the cut <laughs> about to get ugly it's the AJ. worst call ever right yeah. so annoying. <laughs> if you, when you want to see carl troll this is the moment Ugh. when the Nuggets and Lakers play. It's gonna get ugly. It's not even yeah. 
just the playoffs in general because his team is never in there. So <laughs> it's just like, I know, since the chat's been created, he hasn't tasted the playoffs. Hey, look, <laughs> I'm going to find this too. So much for swiping season. Can I ask y'all a question? <laughs> All right, can I ask y'all a question? Uh, what, is, what does swiper mean? Like, what do you think that means, really? Like, swiper, no swiper. When they say swiper, no swiper, what does that mean? Uh, well, I think it's swiper, no swiper. I think it's stealing. Who, who led the league in stealing, Jay? Dorks. Or... <laughs> yeah, he said boots. <laughs> <laughs> he said boots. <laughs> swiper. Swiper. Swiper, no swiping. Let the league in stills this year. So it was swiper season. Let's go to the IG chat, man. Oh, my God. man. All right. So look, we got Instagram chats, y'all. We have a lot of fun. Like, they, you hear the show. When you watch the show, we always reference these chats. And we have a lot of insiders we throw on the show, but you, you won't get it, you know, because you're not part of these chats. We have a chat for almost every single sport. As you can see, look, we, we got to update this. But we added an F1 chat, you know? So make sure, look, you see all these logos? I'm not going to read all them. Y'all can, well, for the listeners, I got to. Yeah. We got the NBA chat, the NFL chat, the baseball chat, NCAA, college, uh, NCAA football, college basketball. We got boxing, UFC, WNBA, uh, hockey, women's, uh, we always say women's basketball, and soccer. And we have F1 also, like I said. So... If you want to be a part of these chats, well, first of all, what do we deliver in these chats? We give you the latest news on like trade rumors, trades that actually happen, free agency rumors, free agency that actually happen. We give you updates on the the, the drive. We we post every pick in the drive. Well, you know, we get NFL don't depend on the six and seven round picks. All right, you're gonna have to watch that yourself. But the early rounds, we give you the pick, we get the updates before you get on the main platforms. All right, uh, what else? We give you statistics at the games, at the matches. You know. So we give you information fast and quick because, you know, in the sports world, we like to know things first. We like to get things early. Somebody be like, hey, you heard about this? Man, I already knew. You late. We love sitting at the people, right? So in them chats, you get that privilege. Also, the best part about it, in my opinion, debating. A lot of conversation, a lot of sports convos goes on in these chats. Somebody throw out a question. Somebody throw out a start, start bench cut. Next thing you know. Hours, hours of debating, hours of back and forth, hours of entertainment. Maybe you don't want to watch ESPN today. Maybe you don't want to watch Fox Sports. You just go in the chat. You got a full show. <laughs> Literally, you got a full show. Happens to me all the time. So if you want to be a part of these chats, you have to click the link in the description and become a member. But my man Tomo, he going to tell you how to become a member. But let him know, Tomo. Well, I mean, Joe, as Joe stated, you know, it's kind of like when you board the airplane. And we got to give you out a tutorial video. We know some people still had their headphones on, some people taking a nap. But if you click the link in the description, because you got to put your seatbelt on first before the plane takes off. So you got to click the link in the description. Then you got to hear about the floaty devices and everything. And that's when we tell you about the tiers, because we talk to the people in first class. You got business and then you got coach. So the people back there in coach, make sure y'all listen. So we got the pro level for $2.99. Those are people who look, man, I'm just trying to get to Vegas. I don't care how I get there. I could be on the last seat on the plane. Pro level, $2.99 a month. You know, we ain't like spirit. You don't got to put everything in the a la carte. Pro level, $2.99 a month. Hey, spirit, if you want to be a sponsor, don't take that. Don't take that as a slight, but I'm just saying. Again, $2.99 a month at the pro level. Your loyalty badges next to your name in the comments and live chats. Priority comments. So again, you get not priority seating, but you get priority comments. So you get to you get to get your spill off real quick. So you get to see if you want BWT and you know Teddy talking about them Yankees losing. You could be the Boston fan at the pro level, and he got to read that comment. I'm just saying. Or if you're a Nets fan, you can go up there and you can cry about it. It, it just is what it is. And you get to join one sports chat. We had literally every sports chat that you need outside of golf, but you get to join one. Then if you want to step it up to business class, you know, you want a little bit of extra room. You know, you get the Wi-Fi jumping. You can pull your laptop out, watch your movies, you know, sit to, sit next to somebody who's like going to Seattle for the day. All-star level for $4.99 a month. You know, you get the same perks from the pro level, meaning you're still on the same plane, but your seat is a little bit bigger. You get to join multiple chats. You get the member-only videos. So this is where the Wi-Fi may be free. You might not get the super fast connection, but it's free. This is where we also talk about. We had our first debate in the members only videos. You know, we had Brian Dawkins versus uh, Troy Polamalu. Who's better? And, and a lot more is coming as far as the member only videos. A lot more content is coming there as well. Four ninety nine a month. You get to request a topic or segment nominee. Topics are for any show on the network. Again, a top. It has to be sports related. 
You're not talking about anything outside of sports. It has to be sports related. Even on the doghouse, I know Joe told y'all it's in relation to the player, but it still got to be relation to a sports player. All right. So remember that. And the segments, again, across the network for Refuse or Lose, we got You're Done, Son, Not So Average Top Five. And I'm just throw out the doghouse. And then RBO Vaughn has a lot of segments as well. I'm just saying across the network. Now, you want to go to first class, you know. If you watch Bride's Maze, you know, when she kept sneaking up past the curtain, help me, I'm poor. Remember that? For $9.99, you can come up to first class where everybody's sipping champagne and, you know, we got the big comfy seats. We get blankets and everything up there. Superstar level. Same perks from All Star and Pro. But again, you priority. You want to play first. You got to watch everybody walk past you. So when you at the Superstar level, you get to watch all the Refuse to Lose members walk past you. But you up here talking, talking, talking. You get the VIP chat. The R2L chat, that is, that's on X and Instagram. You also got a parlay chat where the money resides. And I mean that too. I dibble and dabble in the parlay chat. I watch. I don't do no, I don't do no betting, but the parlay chat is there for y'all. And I watch some of them tickets and I'll be like, man, that's crazy how they going up like that. $9.99 a month. Be a guest on the show. Come on the show. Again, all shows on the network. Awards and plaques to the top performers based upon that episode that you did. So we let the numbers speak for us. For you, not for us, for you. And you can get an award for it. And you get member shout outs. So shout out to all my first class superstar members. You know, Joe, Dave, myself, Teddy, Coach, Donnell, Cardo, Tone. If you want to be in first class, man, just click the link in the description, man. Joe, take the plane off. Uh, no, that's dope. I like that analogy. <laughs> I, I, just, I just spice it up a little bit. Let's get it. I'm trying to get in them comfy seats though with a blanket. I mean, you gonna need them comfy seats, man, because uh, you gotta go down the street. Woo! Oh, what'd you say, Teddy? You might be what? It's gonna be a bumpy ride. Cool. <laughs> gonna be a lot of turbulence, man, because uh, some people will say, man, what's the king without warriors? Mm. Mm. I'm just saying. Okay. Here we, here we go again. You're doing it again. They gotta run it back again. Joe, this is like your Green Bay Packers to the Dallas Cowboys, man. Like every time you see this team, it's just like, come on, bro, not them again. <laughs> I would say the 49ers, but at least y'all get some wins over them. Like Cowboy fans, y'all know how it is when the 49ers show up. You can add <laughs> Philly to that list too. But um, season <laughs> series, two and two. <laughs> I know I had you start this one, so I'm gonna make you wait, man. I'm gonna make oh, you okay. wait. You've been waiting for this one. So we got six. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Dave, you got to be ready, Dave. I'm just warning you, we got to be ready. The cow, he found the cowboy and the fox, fox in my ass. He got a beam. <laughs> Kings, Kings versus Warriors, playing game. Who you got winning, said? I'm sorry, Joe. But the Warriors are coming to play today. Bruh. It's, um, I got, I got the Warriors tonight. Uh, Steph Curry is going to eliminate the Kings, and um, not the cap. It's just, it is what it is. It is what it is, right? Um, I, it's going to be a close game, though. It's not going to be a blowout like the uh, like the Lakers and Pelicans game. Um, I see it coming down to the last minute, um, and we know what Steph Curry does in the last minute. So, uh, I got the Warriors tonight. Man, said he going said he's time to tuck them in. Well, I mean, as long as Sabonis doesn't have one of those moments where he has a flashback of uh, Draymond becoming Kurt Franklin with the stump, <laughs> and Keegan Murray shows up, I know uh, is is Malik back? Malik probably comes back for the play. Oh no, Malik ain't back. Oh, Rest the conference. Okay, there we go. There we go. So we got Keegan Fox, Sabonis, Mike Brown. It's up to y'all, man. It's up to y'all. Oh, they are going up. I gotta say, bro, in the middle. Ah. Shout out to Philly Philly Podcast. Oh God. <laughs> but uh <laughs> it's up to those four men to make something shake because you already know what's gonna happen. You got the you got the dynasty showing up. And I put the meme in the uh, NBA chat and the NFL chat comparing the teams, but this is this is one of those moments where Steph has to show that he's one of the best players. Do we believe that we're going to have the playoffs without Steph Curry or LeBron James? 
I don't think that's gonna happen. I like the Kings. Mm. This one gonna come down to this one gonna come down to another buzzer beater, Joe. But I gotta roll with the Under Armour. I gotta roll with Under Armour, man. I got the Warriors. But I like y'all when y'all make it to the playoffs. If y'all make it to the playoffs. Okay. Let's go, Mass. <laughs> to my man, hey, hey, it's a uh, Philly Philly. Let me give you a quick rundown. So I got Kyrie, Big Sean, um, the most common face person you've ever seen on YouTube. That's all I'm gonna say. You got all the lookalikes I can get. <laughs> all right, uh, Wade. <laughs> um, listen, man, y'all know who I'm rolling with. I'm rolling with Sack Town, man. Payback. Hey, back. Listen, man, when I first saw the matchup, I was like, here we go again. No more of this. Steph Curry, you know, he fake like the beam when they beat us. Game seven. I'm still having nightmares about that 50-point game. But then I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? Just like the Celtics need to beat Miami, maybe first round, to get over that mental hurdle, we got to beat the Warriors. We need this. So I'm going with us. I'm going with us. Another close game. But look, I got something different for y'all. I'm gonna show y'all a little graphic. Here's my keys to success for the for this game. All right. My keys to success. Oh, you like that graphic? Tell me how it look. It look, it look, it look sweet. It look, it look pretty good. Keys. I seen one of these graphics, man. Ty, Ty got the wizards out of here. No, nah, oh, oh, he did. Okay, who? who? <laughs> That's good then. That means it's gonna work. My keys to success for the Kings to win this game. Number one, physicality. All right. Obviously, the Warriors are a playoff team. They are champions. They're going to bring the physicality. They're going to be grabbing. They're going to be pulling jerseys. They're going to be pushing. So, guess what? We got to up the physicality. I believe we are a physical team. We've shown that since the All Star break. We are a physical team. That's why we, what, I think number six in defensive rating since the All Star break. So, we have to up the physicality against these guys. Number two, 50 50 balls. That's so important. That's so important. Playoff basketball is usually termed, especially in a close game, the 50 50 balls. When the ball is loose on the court on the ground, who's going for it? That 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 rebound when both of y'all can get it, who's gonna fight hard for that rebound? Those 50 50 balls, I will be tracking them. I won't come up with that number when I come back on the show. <laughs> uh, on uh tomorrow, where, where we come back on the show. Number three. We got to take it around to the fast break. The Warriors, we all know they're a turnover machine. They turn the ball over a lot. They're eighth worst in the NBA in turnovers. So when we turn them over, we have to capitalize on the turnovers in the fast break. Four, foul trouble. And this for a bonus. So bonus, stay out of foul trouble. The Warriors are best in the NBA in drawing fouls. Stay out of foul trouble with Sabonis. Sabonis likes to dip his shoulder a lot. Draymond's smart. All Draymond's going to do is spread his pause, you know, put his leg like this, <laughs> put his arms up, and you're going to just take Sabonis' uh, shoulder to the chest. All Boom. I ask. All of a, all of a, <laughs> that's all he's going to do, all right? So we got to be smart. Now, they, they start the rookie. The rookie, he actually starts. So, the bonus could actually use him, like, you know, take advantage of his inexperience. But when Draymond is guarding the bonus, stay out of foul trouble because Draymond is going to be looking to meet you at the spot, the bonus, because you're going to dip your shoulder and draw that foul. We need the bonus on the floor. All right? Number five, defensive rebounding. All right? The Warriors are fifth in the NBA in second chance points. We had to... Uh, rebound the basketball. Last year, Sabonis came into the playoffs leading the league in, the, in rebounding, like he is this year, but he was out rebounded by Looney in the playoffs. Looney had 220 rebound games. It's crazy. So we can't allow that. We have to hit the glass and grab that board. We can't allow second chance points to get this team. And last but not least, shoot the ball if you're open. <laughs> if you're open, shoot it. Last year, they let Davion Mitchell they, – they were just, like, leaving people open. You can't leave Davion open no more. He's going to knock it down. Keon, you open, take the three. I hear a podcast from the Kings. We shoot too many threes. Man, shut up. If you open, you shoot the three. What the world? It's the NBA. 
grade. This ain't college. This ain't high school. If you're open, shoot the three. Come on out with the world. Sabonis, so if you're open, shoot the ball. If you're open in the mid range, shoot the ball. Stop pump, stop pumping. Stop looking for the gym ahead. No, shoot the ball. You when mean? you're playing a good team like this in a in a physical game, when you know it's gonna be close, you need every opportunity, every easy opportunity you, you can get. The Warriors, right, are 21st in the NBA and three points made allowed. So they allow a lot of three. You know why? Because they protect the paint. That, that's that's their, that's their style. They protect the paint. They're gonna let you shoot. So the Air Fox, I ain't worrying about you. You going you gonna you gonna go on that screen? You tripping. What's wrong with you? Davion, shoot it, Keon, shoot it. But those are my keys, and I got the beans. Whoa, brother. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, nah. you got too much dip on your chip. Now, graphics, you, you, you remind me of a coach, man. You got the graphics. Like, this, these are literally the keys to the game. Like, we need to do all of these. And if you don't do at least four out of the – what was that, six? Four out of the six – it's gonna be a long night, and for the Kings fans, that's like what you say. The Kings fans keep saying about the three point shot. No, ain't the, uh, we shooting too many. We, we shot fifty something three against OKC, and everybody was mad about that. Emotional damage. <laughs> that's what's going on, man. Because y'all, you already know what it is with these Warriors, show. But if y'all do all six, y'all win this game. Oh yeah, for sure we do all six. But what a chance that's in a, that. perfect, that's, that's in a perfect world. <laughs> Now I agree with you also. Sabonis does need to shoot, and he needs to be prepared for the Draymond smoke. Like I was saying, I don't even know why you put that on the screen. I was trying to ignore that. <laughs> I gotta respect every comment. <laughs> I, I, I do too, but like, we, and we gotta read it. So shout out to Kevo, man. He was like, "Howie Roseman turned these NFC East fans into Kings and War <laughs> Kings and Wizards fans." I'm not gonna say too much about that. I mean. I got I got a lot of gripe with Philly also, not just the football team, but the 76ers. But with that Iverson statue, but this ain't the segment for it. <laughs> but nah. Like I said, it's gonna come down to it's gonna come down to that fourth quarter and who wants it more for me. Like I think Teddy alluded to it too. He says it's not gonna be a blowout like that Pelicans game that he picked. So yeah, yeah, I got a chance. And also in the graphic, it said that um it said that the last three games were decided by one point. Yeah. See? <laughs> and two were buzzer beaters. Clay hit a buzzer beater when Fox didn't play, by the way. And Malik Monk hit a buzzer beater. And Steph missed a buzzer beater on the third one. No. And the fact that I'm saying this is why I don't like that this game is happening at like 10 o'clock. I know, right? You got to play live. I got to watch the whole Lakers game and think about this crap, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, yeah. You got to say something, Teddy? Saturday needs to hurry up. <laughs> hey, yeah, y'all got Miami or Philly, man. I don't care who we got, dude. We're getting past them. You're gonna right. jump in City Hall when Tatum's got the MVP finals MVP trophy in one hand and the the uh finals trophy in the other. Okay. <laughs> and we're gonna be living it up in Boston, baby. <laughs> your kind, Harvard Yard. Miami first. <clears throat> don't matter. Dave, don't matter. Dave, you better be ready. Mm. Let him cook. Yeah, yeah, Teddy got different energy by him this year. So. Man. Man. All right. Well, you know, th this is one of the segments that I told y'all about, you know, when I was telling y'all about the memberships. And we got to yeah. talk about not so average top five. So what uh -huh. that means is, Joe, the floor is yours. Floor is mine? Yes, sir. Oh, we're going to full screen it. All right, y'all, listen. Y'all know the NBA season is over. And I did my not so average top five maybe, what, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. And, you know, we had a certain lineup. We had certain people on here that might not even be on here this time. So we got an updated version of not your average top five. And we're going to kick it off with number five. So number five, Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum. Joe! Why is Tatum top? Why is Tatum in the top five? Why is he? Why is he five? Best player on the best team. What else, Joe? That's all I got for you. Number four. All right. Number four. <laughs> Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson is number four on the MVP list. All right. Now, what I like about Jalen Brunson is this: number one, number two seed in the East. I'm a big component on. You have to have a high seed to be an MVP unless you do something super historic that we haven't seen in a long time. 
So, and that's why Westbrook won it late because of his triple doubles. And Jokic won uh, with a 60, I believe, because the people that qualified didn't play enough games. So he was the next one in line. But Jalen Brunson is an MVP candidate, and he's fourth. Jalen Brunson this year, 28 points a game, 28.7 to be exact. He's third in scoring. Sorry, fourth in scoring. But, uh, 6.7 assists, 3.6 rebounds, and, and he's eighth in PER. What I like about his case is he dealt with injuries all year. I said this on the last episode. Julius Randle missed 36 games. OG, out of the 50 games he could have played with them, he missed 27. Mitchell Robinson missed 51 games. And they still finished with the number two seed. That's ridiculous in the East. All right? They in- improved from last year. Last year, they were the sixth seed, and they improved to the second seed this year. So that's big. They improved this year. So I got him at number four. At number three, and three through one was close. But number three, I got to go with Luca. Sorry, Kev. Luca's number three. Luca could have easily been MVP if he was just top three. But he's five. I'm sorry. He had a chance to get number four, but they opted him out to sit out the last few games, and they just stuck stuck with the fifth seed. I get it. You're, you're playing safe for the playoffs, but it costs you the MVP, potentially. All right? So, uh, Luka, though, historic season, 33.9 points per game, which is first in the NBA. First Mavericks in history to win a scoring title. That's historic right there. 9.8 assists a game, second in NBA in assists while being first in points. That's amazing. 9.2 rebounds a game, which is first amongst guards easily, right? And he got he's six in double doubles, third in triple doubles, fifth in PER. So Luca statistically is an MVP, statistically, but he was a fifth seed. Like I said, if they were at least a third seed. You could have gave it to Luca, but he's not the third seed. He's not. He don't even have home court advantage in the first round. So how can I can't give him MVP if he's not even home court advantage. He got to go to LA first. So I'm gonna have him at three. At number two, this is gonna surprise me right here. Jokic. <laughs> Jokic at number two. Jokic right now is averaging 26.4 game, which is tenth in NBA. Nine assists a game, which is third NBA. 12.4 rebounds, which is fourth in NBA. So he's the only one in his MVP ballot that's top 10 in points, assists, and rebounds. All right? He's also second in double doubles behind the bonus, second in triple doubles behind the bonus. He has the twenty, sorry, the 19th usage rate while, uh, while doing this, by the way, which is awesome, I believe. And he's second in PER behind Joel B. So if you take out Joel B. He's number one in PER. And usually the number one PER person usually wins MVP. But he's not number one technically. It's Joel Embiid. All right? But the reason why Jokic fell off number one to me is because they didn't secure that number one seat. The Nuggets came out and said, we want the number one seat. That's what they said. They won it. And they beat Minnesota and turned around and gave up a 20-plus lead over the San Antonio Spurs and lost by a game-winning buzzer. And Jokic missed a game-winning uh, mid-range jump shot. Like a game-sealing, my bad. Like it was up by one. A game-sealing mid-range jump shot. He missed it. And the Spurs elected to call timeout, ran the floor, and then they shot a, a game-winning layup. So the way they ended this, the way they ended, like now obviously they 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 I think they had the second best record since all-star break. Outside of Boston Celtics, I get you that, right? That just shows you they sense of urgency of getting number one seed, but they fumbled the number one seed last second. And I can't, I'm sorry, they were number two. Jokic didn't have a super historic season, he didn't, and they then they were number one seed. So I got him at number two and number one, first time on well, now you have a top five. Number one is SGA, and this is why SGA is number one, y'all. All right. SGA averaging 30 points a game, which is third in NBA, while shooting 53% as a guard. That's that's tough right there. All right? He's second in steals in the NBA, which is he really is only – he's really tied with De'Aaron Fox per game, but him and Fox both have 150 steals. 
but Fox played one less game than him. So that's why Fox got the edge. But he's right there with Fox in steals per game. He averaged two steals a game, right? He's fourth in PER, which PER is a big stat when it comes to uh, MVP. And 49 games scoring 30, 30 or more points. 49 games a season. So SGA created, he did a good job. And, and how he ended the season was good. Y'all know that SGA didn't play for a while. The, the OKC Thunder lost four games in a row, and they lost the number one seed. Lost four games in a row. He comes back, and they go on a five-game winning streak to end the season. Right? His first game back, he plays against the Sacramento Kings, who's desperate to get this victory to stay in the play And What does he do? He drops 40-plus points and get them a dub while being down by 20. So his play, he led this team all the way through from start to finish. He was clearly their best player all the way through from start to finish. He was the driving force for this team, clearly start from finish. They were not the same without him. They, like I said, they were on a four-game losing streak. So I got SG at number one. And lastly, the reason why he's number one, because the first, the youngest team to be the number one seed in the West, y'all, in the West, since the 05 Mavs. That's, that's dope. We're talking about Nuggets. All, all, all these teams, they're the number one seed. So, those are not so ever top five. Feedback. Just had to let that marinate for a second because Kev going off in the comments. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the same. <laughs> that's <laughs> Okay. I mean, okay. <laughs> You made a great point for each person on this list. I just like Teddy's reaction to number five because uh, technically you could swap those two because Tatum does have the best record in the East. And I, I could swap who? Four and five. I, I went for Teddy to say something. Go ahead. I know Teddy got something to say about that. <laughs> yeah, you can finish, Tom. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I, I was going to say they got the best record in the East. They got the best record in the league. So the fact mm -hmm. that I know what Jalen Brunson has done with the Knicks and how they had how he has performed, Jason Tatum's team is better in the East. Uh, I know mm -hmm. what you want to say about stats, but without Jason Tatum's numbers, the Celtics don't finish at number one in the East. They don't have the record that they have in the league. So you can swap four and five. Now three through two. Now three to one. I'm gonna let my other Mavs fan fight that fight because I like what you got here. Because technically. The seeding, and of course, we go with numbers. Seeding, it all plays into how you want MVP and how we look at it. We know what the M we already know what the NBA gonna do. They gonna give it to Joker. Like we see what OKC is, but they gonna give it to Joker. But your list, I, I, I like it. Though my only gripe, I, I I mean, we gonna see, we gonna see. But my only gripe is five and four. Now, if you want, now I know Teddy may say five needs to be three, but I'll let him fight that fight. Listen, <laughs> there is not a person on this planet other than you that would take Jalen Brunson over a 19-year-old in Boston. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's that. And SGA, I asked it in the chat yesterday, only Tay responded. I'm taking Tatum over SGA every time. You want to talk about best record and best seeding. My boy has had the best record and the best seed for about two weeks. Luca and I, I, Luca and and, uh, and Joker. I feel like they they're in the right spot. Um, you can possibly switch out um, Joker to one. Luca to two because he's he's an incredible scorer. He doesn't really play that much defense, um, and I, I would put Tatum at three. Right? It's it's very impressive at what SGA is doing with such a young team. Right? I get that, um, but um, if we want to go off of what everybody always says, oh, best team, best record, best seed, best player, that's Tatum. Like. It's just it just hurts my heart that you put in that five. Okay, I'm gonna ask you this, Teddy. All right. 
we got to realize you got to have the record and the statistics. Mm-hmm. What what does Tatum does great in NBA? Now, no, we're, we're, we're not saying who's a better player. We're talking about their season. All right? What, 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 what is Tatum dominating right now this season? Score. Scoring? Yeah. I mean, I know Darren Brunson got more 30-point games than Tatum, more 40-point games than Tatum. He got more 50-point games than Tatum. All right? Also, y'all team so good, right? One thing that could get Tatum over the top is can he bring y'all home in these close games? Guess what? He can't. Tatum is one of the worst clutch performers in the NBA this season. If you look at clutch, right? Best on the best team in the clutch, Tatum is shooting 36%, which is worse on his team besides Peyton Pritchard. All the other stars are over 50% in the clutch, except for you are he's 47 percent. But what about everybody else? Yoga is 55% in the clutch. Brunson, 42% in the clutch. Luka, 45% in the clutch. SGA, 58%. Tatum, 36%. The man is 17 in PER. He's not even in the category. He's literally on this list because number one seed. He got the best team. So that's the only, that's the only case you have of Tatum is he has the best team. That's it. When Derrick Rose won MVP with the best team, he had injuries. Joe King Noah missed most of the season. Uh, uh, um, uh, they, I forgot who else. They had multiple injuries that season, and they weren't even a favorite going in. Miami was a favorite. So the fact that they outdid Miami and got the number one seed, he got props for that. Celtics came into the season with all the expectations, and y'all lived up to the team expectations, but Tatum did not live up to the – his numbers actually went down from last year, and I was supposed to give him MVP. Come on, man. I'm not saying to give him MVP. I want him at three. Three? I'm not saying to give him MVP. Oh, with SGA? Yeah. What? I'm, take, I'm taking Tatum over SGA any day of the week. I like get 20. you on that, but we're talking about who had a better season. SGA had a better season than Tatum. He was a driving force of his team every game. Maybe because he had to. I mean, that's what happens. When you have a great team like Tatum, it's hard to win MVP. It really is, unless you, you have to dominate. So he was a driver. The, the KD and Steph Warriors, Steph and KD never won MVP. Yeah. Because they got a good the team was great. Now, when Steph won 73 and now, he was dominant in that fashion. When they won all those games, he was dominant. Tatum is not dominant. Tatum is not topping nothing. I can't look at no statistics and say, oh, that's a Tatum stack. Not one. I can look at Brunson and Blake. Oh, that's a Brunson stat. I can look at Luca. That's a Luca stat. I can look at Yoga. I can, Yoga. I can look at SGA. But Tatum, he's literally up here because of team success. I mean. So, he, SGA he, is the MVP to me because he took the youngest team who was in the play-in last year. We can remember that. They were in the play- Matter of fact, they didn't make the playoffs. They were the 10th seed in the play-in. And he took them as a number one seed in the West. In the West, right? They got a winning record against Denver. They got, I don't know about the Mavericks, but against Denver, they have a winning record against Denver, right? Against the best team in the West. And they're the youngest team that do it. It's all five. It's, it's historic. And he had the most 30 point games this season in, in, in since, uh, I think, in history. I don't know, not in history, but in a long time. That's another historic stat right there. And like I said, how they ended the season, they were losing. And he came back and they won a five game win streak. And took the number one seed for Minnesota and Denver when they were the third seed. So, SGA is an MVP, y'all. Uh, sorry. My, my, thing, my thing with the whole Tatum disrespect is everyone always bashed him. Like, oh, he takes too many crazy shots, all this, all that. And then they want to discredit his growth of the game. You Who, know? Tatum? Yeah. Because he's he's matured. He's matured, ex- like, at an extreme rate this year. He has. My only my issue with Tatum is money time, money time playoffs. Like regular right season, we ain't really. And then he forces up shots. That's why he's shooting thirty six percent. So 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 hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on. So it sounds like because I seen a comment say it's Tatum hurts. I, I they was they was trolling, but you say your problem with Tatum is what in the playoffs? Well, in the playoffs, or oh, he, he, he big moments. He had, I remember one big moment he had too. I guess Dak Prescott. Oh no, nah, he ain't Prescott. He got some moments. Oh, Prescott, uh-uh. Dak has some moments too. Prescott, but I'm just saying. That's Philly. That's Philly. What his moment was? Fifty point. 
50 burger. Yeah, I'm about to say he dropped a 50 burger against Philly and he dropped like 46 against Milwaukee in game six. Those are his two best games he had in the quarterback retire one of the goats. I'm just saying. But I also remember right after he uh did we did against Philly, he went the first three games without taking the field goal and making the field goal in the fourth quarter. That's fine. And then when the team needed him the most, he came back to force a game seven and then he got hurt. Mm. I know, man. I had a jersey on that, so kind of mad about that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then the, the dress calf, man. Calf. He going up, man. What did SGA do in those games for them to – what? It's a Westbrook jump. What? I just hit my own wall. What? <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? Are you serious, bro? Got, what did he do? He got more. Didn't I he just say he had the most? Huh? He got a lot of comments, but go ahead and reply to that first. SGA one. three one get the nugget, three one get the match. Okay, but the match the fifth, bro. You the fifth seed, bro. I'm sorry. Up your seeding. I'm sorry. Why? Why aren't you the fifth? Kevin, how about this? Why are y'all the fifth seed? A- answer that for me, please. Why are y'all the fifth seed? I want to know that because. Why are y'all at this seed? Just answer that for me. And what the SGA do? He led it. To, come on, he, he had like, how many thirty point games he had in a row? He literally was a driving force of that team. And when he walked off, and Luca is too, I get you. But I'm sorry, Luca, you gotta have a better seed, and you got all these stats and stuff. But you gotta win more in the in the regular season. I told you, if Luca was a number three seed, not even number one, he would have won MVP because his numbers are ridiculous. But he's not. He's a fifth. You never have home court advantage in the playoffs. Once again, two players I remember that won MVP below, like below the four C, like below the three C for real. It was Jokic and Westbrook. Westbrook won it because he won. He made he, he averaged a triple double. Nobody has done that since the since the uh, Oscar Robinson days. Jokic won it because it was the COVID year. James Harden was gonna win. He didn't play no. He had a little Houston thing. When I, he left, he, he tanked with the Houston. People didn't like that. And he didn't play enough games. LeBron could have won it. He ain't played enough games. And B could have won it. He ain't played enough games. Then they was like, who's next in line? Oh, it's Jokic. Okay, we're going to give it to Jokic. Literally, that's what happened that year. But outside of that, you had to be a top three seed to be an MVP. I'm sorry. And you had a chance to get a higher seed and you set out. Oh, Joe, we wrestled for the playoffs. My bad. You, you vied the playoffs more than MVP. I commend you for that. But you lost the MVP because of that. I'm sorry. You can't have it both ways. Like, I'm sorry. So it is what it is, man. Fact. That, that's you know, as what I just said. Yoga's won because NB and LeBron and James Harden didn't play enough games. James Harden was when he got to the Nets, he was cooking. He could have won MVP there. too. He was. He was. He was on the tear. But Jokic had to win because he played 82 games when when COVID season when everybody missed the time he played 82 games, bro. He was the only one that did that. Like that that that, that meant a lot that year. So I'm sorry, Teddy Tatum is is number five. I had him higher, you know that. I had him higher, but he could be four. Nah, Jalen Brunson is four. Jalen Brunson had a better season than Tatum. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He had a one. He would have had, had the that. number one seed if he had the better. If he had the no, better seed. Tatum had a better team success. I'm talking about individually. He had a better season because well, he had to work with, and they still got to the number two seed. I see what Are you're you saying. But if Tatum, you take Tatum off that team, they Tatum, not, they're not a number one. If you or, take Tatum off the team, take Brunson on the team. The Knicks are not even making the playoffs. The Boston Celtics might even still be a top two seed. You take Tatum out. I ain't going top two. Top mm-hmm. two, top three. Minimum. They not falling past three. You take Tatum out. I don't know, no. Joe. I don't, I don't know. know, Joe. No, I don't they, know. You, they might be like, they might be down there Joe. with Orlando. Go ahead, go ahead. Joe, we've seen what they look like when Tatum is not even like 50%. Right? Okay, how about this? How about Jaylen this? Brown. You, 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 take, you take Tatum out and you have Jalen Brown be the main, the main focus of the offense. Looks like crap. <laughs> It, it, it's terrible. It, it's really bad. I, I'm with I'm with Tom on that one. It, they'll probably be like a five six seed without Tatum on that team. I'm just saying five six I, seed, and the Knicks ain't even in the playing without Brunson. With all these injuries they had, come on, man. They they done, but Brunson literally put them on a on his back. He had to drop, bro. In the last game of the season, when they get the four, they get the second seed, he had to drop forty. How many shots did he take? Yes, he had to. Yes, get the job done. I love that. I don't care about your percentage. If your, if your percentage is good, 
more that's better. But, but if you the way, get, but the way that you're knocking Jason Tatum is his shooting percentage in the clutch. In the clutch, come on, man. in the clutch, Teddy. Yeah. I'm talking about the clutch. Bronson percentage in the clutch is higher than Tatum's. I mean, you, you, we're talking about the clutch. I ain't bringing nothing about regular field goal percentage with Tatum. I'm talking about in the clutch. Like, like you got the best team. So we expect got a win, but when the game gets grimy, can your guy show up? And he hasn't. He hasn't. Like at least, okay, at least if he if he was one of the best class players, I could have been like, y'all keep saying that he 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 got the best team, but he's 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 winning these games for them. I can't even say that. I can't even say that, bro. I can't even say that. Like, I can't I can't say that. So if you take Tatum all, so that's why the team success. Yes, yeah, Celtics. The Celtics were better than the Knicks. But Jalen Brunson had a better season than Jason Tatum this year. He had a better season. Jalen Brunson has been, a, outside of Joel B, has been the best player in the East this year. I, I see what you're saying. And I'm not mad at it, but I'm here for the debate. So, I'm to me, I got Tatum at four and I got Brunson at five. I'm sorry. And I like what Brunson has done for the Knicks, but no. Nah. Yeah, y'all, y'all giving y'all giving Tatum that Purdy treatment, bro. Is like, well, if his team wasn't so good, no, 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 no. Purdy led a league in statistical categories. <laughs> don't don't compare him to Purdy. Purdy was leading the passing yards. He was leading the number. He was leading, Joe, leading that Joe, completion percentage. Joe, Joe, you were on the Purdy wave. I'm talking about everybody else who was like, Purdy has this, 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 and this, and this is why his stats are good. It's still You're different. How? You know, I'm still different. They were saying Purdy's stats were good because of this. Now, if you, if you, now Tatum ain't, ain't, now Tatum is not getting killed for his stats. He's killed. He's not getting killed. He's literally getting rewarded. Like he's on here because he's got the best record. If they didn't win, they were number two seed. He won't be top five. He won't even be top five if he was number two seed. I won't even put him on the top five. I'll put Anthony Edwards in there over him. If he if he wouldn't talk about, but you talking about a team that just had to play the Bulls to the last last minute to even get a two seed, and you put him at four. But to get a two, the, the Bulls don't even matter. It's, it's, that's no, 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 no. The Knicks play, had so. to play the Bulls just to get the two seed. Yeah, fight tooth and nail. You talking about a guy's team who was spanking everybody from a day guy's one. team? Yeah, it's a guy's team. But, what, but without him on that team, they wouldn't have this record. The Celtics are seven and one without Tatum this year. Man, get that out of here. Seven and one without Tatum this year. Seven and one. Yes. They play in eighty-two Who they play? games. Who they play? They they play Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> bro, y'all beat us with the backups, bro. Come on, now. Yeah, yeah. Look, this is how good that team was. They took the they took the starters out for the whole fourth quarter and still won. That's crazy. And we had our starters in the whole game. That was let's go. Insane. Let's go. Let's go. That was they, they, huh? That was that was insane. We watched that live. That was crazy. That was that was crazy. All right, that was crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. Wow, they they, they uh, you know what? They, it's, it's some bad teams up here. I I get that to you. Exactly. He was resting. Some bad teams. Woo, for some bad teams. God. Right. Now God, look at, now look at the record without Jalen Brown and check out the teams that we played because we're undefeated without Jalen Brown. But how many games? Okay, like bro. I'm sorry, bro. That Celtics <laughs> team is too good. <laughs> but now without Tatum, oh, that Celtics is too good. I can't believe y'all saying that trying to compare the New York Knicks without Brunson. The new what you just said with Brunson dropping a forty piece against the Bulls, they made a two seed. If Brunson was not there this year, that team is in a lottery. That team's in a lottery right now. But with these. without Tatum, they still a playoff team. The East. We never faulted you though for that one, no, Joe. We said that the Celtics are a playoff team without Tatum. We're not saying they have the. What I'm saying is they don't have the best record in the NBA. They're not the number one seed in the East without him. I, I never said that they were, but you gotta have statistics. Also, he don't have that. He he's not he's not dominant in no statistic. None. Not one. Sorry. Case closed. He does not. So we supposed to just make him number one because he got the best record? I not number one. one. Number one. We should put him over Brunson only because he got a better record than him? Really? That's like, one of the factors. Yes. One. But 
that Celtics team was favorite. Everybody expected Celtics. In my opinion, they should have won more games than four. They are that good. They got clearly the best team in the NBA. We were chilling for the last two weeks. Like I clearly said. The best. And, and, and that hurt the MVP cases. I just told y'all Luca hurt his about yeah, to sit nah, in two games. So you got, yeah, yeah. I'll let you know. Come on, man. I'm like, <laughs> oh, nah. Ain't Teddy. That's not good. Tom, they are you, so good. You was fighting back, Teddy. Once week. you said that, and I was like, ah, you're going you gonna to hear it for the third time. You're going to say something. <laughs> That's how good they are, Tom. They sat for two weeks, bro. Pay Pritchard. That man averaged 30 the last two games. <laughs> Come on. Y'all talking about they ain't got no team? They bad was average, and they still. Come on, man. But does that he team is too good. Because of him, though. Pay Pritchard jumped 30 twice, and they won both of them games. <laughs> But does he have? Hey, we ain't gonna, I ain't gonna sit up and have a good question. Would you say that? What? As a, but does he have a defensive bag? That's a real question. <laughs> see, see, I said I joined the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta join the chat. But look, love for the Celtics, man. It's game time. It's game time, baby. It's game time. Yeah, I know. I said they played bad teams. They played the Pistons twice too. Woo. <laughs> they played Toronto, Charlotte. They put like all the pass. <laughs> but yeah, all right, let's wrap this up, man. That, 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 that was intense. All right. I knew I knew I, when 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 I knew Terry was gonna have something to say. <laughs> yeah, when you said when you sent me the list this morning, I was like, oh Joe. It's Joe. funny because I, I had made the list and you text me and say I'm on. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> you going not gonna <laughs> like this. <laughs> You're not gonna like this. All right, let's wrap this up, man. Hey, look, great show today. It's game day. Uh, you know, I gotta get real. This could probably be the last game of the king season. <laughs> so I'm trying to embrace the moment. That's why I'm throwing my belt everywhere. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, got the jersey on. <laughs> you feel me? The my one fox mask. I got it right here somewhere. You know, I got the fox mask. You know, but I'm gonna say that if we win. But listen, gotta respect the Warriors. The Warriors are a tough matchup with us because Steph Curry is a baby face assassin. I don't know. Draymond does a great job neutralizing Sabonis, but I got a feeling Sabonis is going to have a good game today. I think, uh, like, the, against uh, against Portland, the last game of the season, he took the most jump shots he's ever taken all season, y'all. <laughs> he was getting ready. He like, you know what, Draymond going to try to let me shoot, man. I got I to hit these jumpers, you know? So, come on, Warriors, man. Let, let's, let's, let's send them on. Let, let's send, it will make me so feel so much better to send you these things. Home. Huh? You mean Kings? I say Warriors. Woo! Kings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, Kings. Somebody clip that. Somebody clip that. That's what I'm saying. He's Come like, Come on, on Warriors. We got to send these boys home. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Kings. It, it'll be feeling, it'll feel so bad, so good to send these dudes home after Seth Curry did the. Man, I was like, dude, I, I like you, bro. Rooting room, room for you, it feels good. Rooting against you, bro, you annoying. Like, it's a crazy good annoying, bro. <laughs> now, now I know how my cousin, I like, as a Rockets fan, feel. Now I know how he feel, bro. Like, when, when yeah. they beat, he, he had tweeted me and said, hey, now you know how I be feeling about the Warriors, bro. I'm like, nah, I see what you're talking about, bro. I, I don't like Steph Curry right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like he front run that. He was quiet the whole series. And when they yeah. won game seven, he started doing a bang. I'm like, wow, bro. Like, really? That's what you're going to do? <laughs> Yeah, but respect I told somebody that when I was talking about Steph, he's like, bro, what happened with Steph? I'm like, bro, he he starting to look like a front runner to me, bro. He's like, nah, bro, Steph. Like, I'm like, he's a good player, but I'm just telling you, bro. When they losing, he go MIA. But when it's up, he turning to uh, he turning to Swift. You yeah. know, he got a lot to say. Yeah, bro. He he was talking trash. I was like, dang, bro. I was like, All the right. breeze falling. You know, the crowd going crazy. <laughs> like he can't miss, and you just sitting there like, come on, bro. But hey, yeah. that's what it is when you break. Shout out to the whole network. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Man, like the bang. Hashtag swipe of season. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, Kings, man. Y'all gotta do something. Y'all had Joe here. Something. Come on, Craig. Get up, Craig. <laughs> Get up. <laughs> I'm gonna find that Meek Mill sound, man. No. I gotta find it. But uh, my last words is more so look, man, DC basketball teams. Let me let me say that right now. DC basketball teams. I don't care about your football team right now. This is the moment, man. It's time to rebuild. We was rebuilding. Elena Deladon going to be out this season. We got the mm-hmm. four or five punch, man. We're going to see what we can do, ladies. Wizards, got to find a coach. I see a lot of people liking the interim coach, man. He did some things. A lot of talk around town is saying that he, he deserved a job. I mean, if the front office could put a team around him, I'm with y'all, but we need to actually interview some other coaches before we just give somebody the job. Do your due mm-hmm. diligence. 
the Wizards make the right call. I ain't got nothing to say to the Cowboys, man. Like they had, they they said they was going all in, and I've yet to see them do anything that shows all in. You know, they all out. All in. They the all. Media. Yeah, that's it. All in the media. That's it. let me write that down. Let me <laughs> talk about them because that's all they was. They all out. All the players out. Players opting out of training camp. This is just getting ugly. Go ahead, Teddy. Yeah. Um. As always, uh, great to be on here. Appreciate you guys for having me on. Um, he ain't going away. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be playing. in the chats. Make sure you click <laughs> the description and become a member because uh, you don't want to miss this. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Yankees need to bounce back today. Uh, we got Carlos Rodon on the mound going up against Kikuchi. Uh, he, 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 he lit us up the other day. Um, he, he actually shut us out um, last time we played at our home opener. So uh, hopefully they can make some adjustments and get a win today, tie up the series, and then get the series win tomorrow with Showman on the mound. Um, Celtics, hope you guys are in the Red Hour Box Center, getting ready, putting up shots, listening to what Joe says about Tatum. Okay. Um, yeah. Nah. Make sure you check in BWT. Shout out to Belichick too. Turned seventy two today. Yeah. Is it true that he coaching for Washington? That's nah. a, that's a real thing. He's showing up. His son is. He just he's just at the practices. Oh why? Because he, he wearing a he, he wearing a gear though. Yeah. yeah. It, it's like when you bring your kid to work. That's like, true. Belichick's bringing his dad to work. You know. He's yeah, that's true. That's, that's just yeah, like the kid with the mullet. Yeah. 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 He's a defensive oh, coordinator. Oh man. Defensive coordinator, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. good though. So when he is for your kid, you know. But Why he just turned seventy two today. Six time Super Bowl champion, three time coach of the year, two thousand All Decade team, two thousand ten All Decade team, NFL one hundred anniversary All Team, most Super Bowl wins, eight most Super Bowl wins as a head coach, six. And people oh. say he, he, he fashion. Tomo, I know what you're gonna say. Don't say it. Leave it for the chats. You don't want to leave it. Up. You I wasn't even gonna say that. I was gonna say, man. <laughs> And deflate the footballs. Let's go, Joe. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> All we got for y'all today is we'll see y'all at the next episode. <laughs> Peace. Thank you for staying to the end. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like this video, subscribe. And also hit that notification button so you can be notified next time we put out a video. If you're listening on any podcast platform, subscribe and hit that notification button, y'all, so you can be notified we put out another podcast audio. And last but not least, hit that share button. No matter what you're listening to or, or watching it, hit that share button and send it to somebody that you know that would love to watch this episode you just listened to. So once again, thank you for staying to the end, and we'll see y'all the next episode.